President Trump, he is back at the White House this morning after a Western tour marked by striking shifts in tone. First, that fiery attack on the media and fellow Republicans in Phoenix, then a call for unity and healing in Reno. Our chief White House correspondent, John Call, has the story. Good morning, John. Good morning, George. It was a defiant two-day trip out west where the president aimed some of his harshest attacks at fellow Republicans. As the president returned to the White House overnight, he ignored questions on whether he plans to pardon controversial sheriff Joe Arpaio. On his trip out west, the president did a political version of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. After Tuesday's 75-minute diatribe against his critics... I always hear about the elite, you know, the elite, their elite. I went to better schools than they did. I was a better student than they were. I live in a bigger, more beautiful apartment, and I live in the White House, too, which is really great. On Wednesday, he talked of love and unity. It is time to heal the wounds that divide us and to seek a new unity based on the common values that unite us. The two speeches, just hours apart, were shockingly different. We are defined by our shared humanity, by our citizenship in this magnificent nation. I really think they don't like our country. I really believe that. And by the love that fills our hearts. I hit them with neo-Nazi. I hit him with everything. In Arizona, the president also lashed out at the state's two Republican senators, prompting the Speaker of the House to issue a plea for Republican unity instead. Well, I think the president feels that that's, 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 a, that's a strategy that works for him. Uh, I, I would just say that I think it's important that we all stay unified. In Arizona, the president also threatened a government shutdown if Congress does not fund his border wall. That is something that is not sitting well with fellow Republicans. Paul Ryan said nobody wants a shutdown. And Mitch McConnell put out a statement insisting that he has a good relationship with the president, saying, quote, we are working together to develop tax reform and infrastructure legislation to grow the economy and create jobs, to prevent government faults, to fund the government so we can advance our priorities in the short and long terms. But George, you'll notice in that statement, no mention of the border wall. And I am told that McConnell and the president have not spoken in more than two weeks. And their last conversation was a tense phone call where the president was essentially shouting at McConnell over the Russia investigation. Tense times in that showdown is looming fast. Okay, John, so okay, John, stand by because we also saw yesterday for the first time Hillary Clinton speaking out, uh, an excerpt of her book which is coming out in September where she talks about that moment in the debate with Donald Trump where he was looming behind her. Let's listen. Well, what would you do? Do you stay calm, keep smiling, and carry on as if he weren't repeatedly invading your space? Or do you look him in the eye and say loudly and clearly, back up, you creep. Get away from me. I know you love to intimidate women, but you can't intimidate me, so back up. She might wish now, John, that she had said that, but this book is going to be coming out in September when all these other big issues are hitting. Absolutely. She will not hold back. And, George, the president hasn't held back. He sometimes attacks Hillary Clinton so harshly and so regularly that it seems like the campaign was never over.